Well, I greet you in the Holy Ghost. I'm Brother Dwayne, and we welcome you to another exciting episode of the Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Shekinah Family Worship Center, where Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313. 300-6457 or find us on social media under the Cry for America. We're on Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, and the Poppy Podcast. Please leave a like, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, a thumbs up, share it across your social media platforms, and help us to let this word of God go forth. As we are documenting God's servant, Apostle Paul, as he is ministering here in Detroit, October 17th, 2022, ministering, oh, a heavy duty word, revelation on the purpose of tongues. My goodness, let's go now to Apostle Paul as he is ministering this word from God. Why do you, how do you show a word in a heart like this? This message is in two parts that make it complete. Makes it complete. I will, I will only deliver one part. And the next Sunday morning, I will deliver the rest. I know you have forgotten that we we met this word before. This is 2021 December. December 2021. The, it seemed like the first part actually, all right, is 20, uh, let me see. Yeah, the first, the first part should be the 2020. But the, the, the first part, 2020, all right, is gonna be the second part because of the way it is delivered by the Lord. Okay, the way it was brought forth by the Lord, I can only bring, I cannot bring the 2020 right now. It's more fire. This is foundational. This is the basic laying down the bricks. All right, so listen to me. Whatever God has ever called you to do, and God has callings, the calls of God have come to you, but some of you have not really understood. And you cannot understand unless this, this word has done its work. Unless this very word I am going to bring has done its work in your being. It ain't done its work, you, you will not even know that you've been called. You will not even know that because this, this word, all right, brings the call to your consciousness. This word brings the call of God that is embedded in your being. You ain't come forth. You don't even know what God called you to do. All right? <laughs> Some don't know what God has called you to do, but the call is in there. It's in there. The plan was, was installed in, in you with everything else. God's call is there but it has to be made manifest to the realm of your consciousness. Amen. So you realize, wow, I know God has called me. I feel deep in my being that there's something I need to do, do for God. There's not a human being that has been saved by God that has nothing to do for God. There's not a human being that has been saved by God, and you know, but he don't have nothing to do for God. He don't exist. Amen. Every human being was programmed before you were born, you were put in your mother's womb. Okay? The program was there. All right? But when you came to Jesus, then everything was activated. Not until you've been born again, the, the call is lying dormant. You don't do nothing. Because you were programmed with a mission from heaven to come to earth. To come and do the very reason why God sent you to earth. But when we come, the, the, the desires of the earth are so intense that it overcomes anything else you know, we ought to think about. We don't think about God. And nobody starts, <laughs> starts on earth thinking about God. There are just a few guys that know that God called and that they have something to do for God. Yeah. 
But the majority of people don't know nothing. And yet it is there. The program of God is there in your being. Until you turn to Christ. And the Redeemer forgives your sin. Okay. And puts his life within you. Then God's agenda is activated. But then it is activated, and, but it hasn't come to the consciousness that you are aware that you are called. A lot of people are not aware that they are called. I said, maybe most of you on, online, you are not aware that you are called. You know that, you know, you, you feel good with Jesus. But he didn't save you just to feel good with Jesus. Amen. He saved you with a mission to do for him. But not until you have embraced this message and you have decided that you're going to walk in what God has said here. Your calling ain't going to be made manifest. Ain't going to you know, grow because callings grow. They grow as you go into this realm with this message here. Your call will take shape as this word here does its work in your being. I'm going to talk about the Holy Ghost. But not just the Holy Ghost. I'm going to talk about, I thank my God, I talk them language. More than you all. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to talk about tongues. Yes, God. Speaking in tongues. Praying in the Holy Ghost, its usefulness, its purposes. From the mouth of the Almighty God, talking to you about tongues. Yes, not a man going to study and talk to you. I ain't study nothing. I know some tongues. Mm -hmm. I know that I read about it. You know, I, I, I taught it. But not when it comes from the heart of the Almighty God himself. Yes. Telling you what it does. Yes. Telling you why the strange language was given to you. Some of you, you, you just, you know, that, like, like I say, it's a sla. when you go to church and you feel happy, it's la, 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 it's la, 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 it's la, la, <laughs> You have five minutes, oh, the church was good. Why well, was church good? Oh, yeah, the Holy Ghost move. You hold your sla, la. <laughs> the Holy Ghost go with your sla, la. Sla, sla, sla. <laughs> Come on now. Listen. We have played games with the Holy Ghost. I'm saying we have played church with the Holy Ghost. Amen. What he's supposed to bring forth, he ain't coming forth. Because we ain't, we ain't, we ain't recognized in what it's all about. Okay, we have not recognized what it is all about. All right? Now let me read this, 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 this portion of the scripture to you. Before, before I go in there, before I, before I go here, let, let me read this, this scripture to you from Matthew or Mark, whichever I can open you, okay. I just open to Matthew right there, all right? Okay, let me read it. Matthew, the same day, Matthew 13, the same day Jesus went out of the house, and was sitting beside the sea. But such great crowds gathered about him that he got into a boat and remained sitting there while all the throng stood on the shore. And he told them many things in parables, stories by way of illustration and comparison, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell by the roadside. Some seeds fell by the roadside. Not on the terrain where he's supposed to. He has earmarked or had to be his, you know, his ground for sowing the seed. But it fell on the, on the, on the uh, well, wayside. Not on the very road, the, the very soil that he, has, he had intended to, you know, to uh, clear and then you know, to put his, his seed in. Fell by the wayside, my Lord. And the birds came and ate them up. The birds came and ate them up. The birds, they were watching him. 
the birds, they watch. Them devils watch. I said, them devils watch for the word. So they can go and devour it. So here, it says, and others, uh, other seeds fell on rocky ground. We have roadside ground, wayside, roadside, and then we have rocky ground where they had not much soil. Notice they had not much soil. And at once they sprang up. Hallelujah. Because they had no depth of soil. They just showed up, brand up. Oh yeah, we're going to save, save the whole world, brother. Hallelujah. We're going to save Detroit. We're going to save New York. Save, save the Africans. Save the Indians. Next week he ain't there. <laughs> the next day he don't show up in church. <laughs> but he was boasting he's going to save Africa. Going to save America. But the very next day he, he, he fell uh, uh, away. Why? <laughs> he was just happy for just one moment. <laughs> he ain't got no soil. <laughs> ah, yes, God. He has no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. The seeds were scorched. And because they had no root, they dried up and withered away. Ain't that something? Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them out. Other seeds fell on good soil and yielded grain some a hundred times as much as was sown some 60 times as much and some 30. He who has ears to hear, you see what he said? He who has ears to hear, uh, let him be listening and let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Yeah, boy, he's a master at teaching. So, and, this, and the disciples, then the disciples came to him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? And he replied to them, to you, to you, to you, to you who are born again, to you who are walking with me. It has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, as in other words, those outside, those who don't know Christ. To them it has not been given. For whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. And he will be furnished richly, so that he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is the reason that I speak to them in parables. Because having the power of seeing, they do not see. And having the power of hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they grasp and understand. In them, indeed, is the process, is the process of fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. Which says, you shall indeed hear and hear but never grasp and understand. And you shall indeed look and look, but never see and perceive. For this people, this nation's heart has grown gross, fat and dull, full of barbecue dinners. You didn't say amen, I mean, because, because it, is, it is true. And, and their ears heavy and difficult of hearing. And their eyes they have tightly closed, shut, lest they see and perceive with their eyes, and hear and comprehend the sense with, uh, with their ears, and grasp and understand with their heart, and turn, and I should heal them. But blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are your, are your eyes, your eyes are blessed because they do see. 
Ah, what a blessed thing to have a seeing eye. The Bible says, a seeing, the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Both are gift of God. Look at Proverbs, you, you see it. The seeing eye and the hearing ear. The Lord has made both. So why don't you cry for a seeing eye? Why don't you cry for a hearing ear? I never heard anybody crying to God for an ear that hears. Crying to God for eyes that see. You got eyes you don't see, but you ain't crying for, for nothing else to come to your help. Say so here. All right, he says here. Brother, that blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are your eyes because they do see, and your ears because they do hear. Truly, I tell you, whoo, I tell you, many prophets and righteous men, men who were upright and in right standing with God, yearned to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. Listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. What's the meaning, Jesus? While, he said, while anyone is hearing the word of the kingdom and does not grasp and comprehend it, the evil one, the birds, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the roadside. Along the roadside, exposed to the eyes of them devils. I, he said it was around the, the roadside. When they hear, you don't understand. You don't, you don't go deep. You don't go nowhere. Them birds come and take it away. All right? Then he said, as for what was sown on thin rocky soil this is he who hears the word and at once welcomes and accepts it with joy yet it has no real root in him he just go to church he ain't put no root down as isaiah talked about the rem this remnant that has escaped will once again take root downward and then shoot up. Amen. But the guy came, heard the word, ain't no root. Just go to church. Yet it has no real root in him, but is temporary, ah, inconstant, lasts but a little while. And when affliction, or trouble, or persecution, let's say temptations, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, Rise up against him on account of the word. At once he is caused to stumble. He is repelled and begins to distrust and desert him whom he ought to trust and obey. And he falls away. He falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is he who hears the word. But the cares, ah, the barbecue dinners. Oh, yes, they are always calling, calling us. The cares of the world and the pleasure and delight and glamour and deceitfulness of riches. Ain't that something? Glamour. There used to be a store, a, a store some, 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 this is called glamour. Uh, I don't know where it is now. <laughs> glamour. Brother, he got he got the he got the glam the the, the, the real glamour you want. In, in, in the world, you go out there and you, you see some style, some oh brother. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> ah. He says, but the cares of the world and the pleasure and delight and glamour and deceitfulness of riches choke and suffocate the word. What? The word of God can be choked. The word of God can be suffocated. Wow. The word of God. Wow. Ain't that something? Amen. Can choke and can be suffocated. And it yields no fruit. It yields no fruit. 
As for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and grasps and comprehends it. He indeed bears, bears fruit and yields in one case a hundred times as much as was sown in another 60 times as much and in another 30. I'm not going to go forward anymore. You hear that? Now, hear me now. There, these are four, four types of soil, right? Four types of soil. Three of them in good. I say three of them in good. I don't know what kind of soil you have right now in your heart. Because the heart is the soil for the seed of God's word. You don't plant the, the word of God in the head. Amen. You sow it in the heart. You don't sow the word of God in your stomach. You sow it in the heart. There's only one place and one place alone in the human structure, the human composition. There's only one place alone that God plows and sows his seeds in the heart. So the heart is the receptacle of all divine words. And the heart is the is the is the is the is the home depot, right? Where where God has all his stuff you know, stayed. Yes. That's right. So unless the heart is right, nothing gonna happen. Unless the heart is plowed, nothing gonna happen. You can go to church all you want to, but you have nothing to show. Right? Okay. So we are dealing with the heart, with the heart, the heart problem. The, the, the types of soil, all right, that receive the seed. Is your heart a roadside or wayside? Is your heart a thorny ground? Is your heart a stony ground? Is your heart a good soil? You see that? But remember, these are hearts, all right? And we're going to see why this message is so vital, all right? Okay. Let me read what I asked for. I required for this. I left my, my book over here. Let me read this to you. August, God calling August, August 2nd. Harvest. You see, that's what we're looking for. Harvest, right? The, the, the sower. Was he not looking for a harvest when he went and sowed, you know, this thing? On all, harvest from all four grounds. All four soil he expected. But only one soil that, you know, that, Happen to be good soil and produce some stuff for him. All right, okay, here. God calling August 2nd, harvest. My Lord, we seek thy blessing. That's the that, that's the cry of the of the listeners, of the ladies. My Lord, we seek thy blessing. Yeah. But I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I love to pour my blessings down hear the lord hear what the lord is saying i love to pour my blessings down in rich and choicest measure i love to bless in abundance yeah. i am come that he might have what abundant life That's right, yeah. life and have it more abundantly God is not in, in just some say he said well, well, Isaiah told you, he said there's some messy drops have been falling up about it. Hey, we're looking for the showers. Looking for the showers. And not just some drop, drop, drops here over here. We want some showers, not some uh, sprinkling. God blesses his children. He wants to bless them in abundant measure. He wants to, now I'm not talking about the, the uh, home, the what? I'm not going to talk about material blessings. I know that's what I'm, I'm talking about. I say that is not what I'm talking about. Material blessings, no. The blessings of God are spiritual. Yes, sir. He has promised he'll give, you, he'll give you the bread and water that you need. He has promised a place to lay your head, some clothes to wear. But the real blessings of God are spiritual blessings. But when you are spiritually blessed, you know what happens? Your faith is quickened. Your faith is quickened. And when your faith is quickened, you are able to believe God. 
thank you, Jesus. I thought I thought the prophet was sleeping, but he was alive. <laughs> he, he's a sleeper. Go, go and seek your God. <laughs> oh yes, God. All right, say here. I love to pour my blessings down in rich, in choicest measure. But like the seed sowing, is that what, what we read? Like the seed sowing, the parable of the sower, the seed sowing, the ground, the ground must be prepared before the seed is dropped in. You hear that? Amen. The ground must be prepared. You know, you say, you know, you go to church and then your ground is, your, your heart is right. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you can go to church and nothing is happening to your heart. Amen. God, there ain't no word coming to dig it out. Coming to break down all the fallow, uh, uh, well, the fallow grounds in your, in your heart. Mm -hmm. So there, there's got to be some work done in your being. All right, you say here. But like the seed sowing, the ground must be prepared before the seed is dropped in. Yours, your responsibility. Yours. Your responsibility before God. Yours is to prepare the soil. Yours, it is your job to prepare the soil. It is my job to prepare the soil of my heart. No, no church going is going to prepare your heart. I'm, I'm sorry. I can preach a good word and you go and you don't get no blessing from it. Because your heart is as hard as a stony ground. You ain't done nothing to position your heart where God can come in and find it ready. You ain't got no, no, no prayer life. You ain't got no fasting life. You ain't got no crying heart unto God. How can your heart be ready to receive a word from God? Jesus. Amen. It says here, yours to prepare the soil. And it is my job, the Lord God. It is my job, mine, Lord, the Lord. Mine is to drop the seed blessing into the prepared soil. You see that? You are, you are going to think that it is the pastor who sows the seed. No, it is the Lord God in the pastor. When I stand here, I tell you how I prepare to come and stand before you. I open my whole being to God. Every unclean thing must go. Every wicked thought must go. Every wickedness in my heart must be dug out before I come and stand before you. So that God will be free to run through that highway. <laughs> it brings the bulldozer through the highway. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's my job. Amen. I don't drop the seed. He who dwells inside me, he is the sower. Yeah. He is the teacher. Mm -hmm. He is the apostle. He's the prophet. Yeah. He's the evangelist. Yeah. He's the pastor teacher. It is Christ's ministry. Christ is the apostle. Christ is the prophet. Christ is the evangelist. Christ is the pastor teacher. Christ, that's his job. The ministry belongs to him. So he's the sower. If we, are, if we will be true to God, we will see that he's the sower. But how do you show a word in, 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 in a, 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 an unseen heart? Tell me, how do you say? <laughs> Why do you, how do you show a word in a heart that you don't see? But God sees it. That's right. ah, he made the heart. He made the heart. He can locate the heart and, 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 and target the heart and direct the word. You don't understand Jesus. Amen. Brother, he's, he pinpoints how your heart is, is, is positioned in your being. He knows it. He knows your heart. Yes, you, Pastor, and me, we don't know the heart. Mm -hmm. Somebody sit down there. I don't know what, uh, what, what, what state is, uh, is the heart. But Christ inside me, when I have untied him, his eyes are like the eagles. He knows. He sees. Ooh, 
He will go and bring some word that you never expected will come from the rod. Boom! It breaks all the resistance in your heart. Do you remember? Do you remember the testimony from Zimbabwe? That pastor who came there to resist us? Right. And how God brought him down? I didn't know that the guy was resisting. Okay, he came to resist us. And he 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 he, well, he testified. The man with the jackhammer. <laughs> I never heard. I never heard anybody calling me like that. I didn't know. I, I didn't know I had a had a, 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 a jackhammer. I didn't know. He said the Lord said you there there. What he was there. He, he is drilling a rock in the depth of the soil. That is your heart. Your heart is rocky. That's why he's plowing, plowing. Whoa! He said I I had it and I was because I was I was blasting gold and preaching hard. I didn't know I was digging, digging some hard ground. But the, the master knew the heart. So listen, it is time for ministers to, be, to, to humble themselves. And acknowledge that they are nothing. They are only something as, as long as the donkey is something. Why, why is the donkey so important? The only one thing he did. The donkey allowed Christ to sit on him. Ooh, the, the donkey. That's, that's the only role that donkey played. But look at what Jesus did with that donkey. He going places. He, go, he was able to move from here and there with the donkey. Christ is the master. Christ is the savior. No man can save anybody. No man save anybody. Only Jesus Christ indwelling us. Makes us like useful vessels in his hands. So until um, um, uh, well, a minister recognizes that he is nothing. So why do we think we are something? Why? The man died all by himself. He died all by himself. You, you hear me? Did you go to, the, uh, to Mount Zion to go and help him? Did you go to the cross? Well, was you there? You were in there. Who, who on, on, on the internet was there at the cross when Christ was dying? Anybody there? Anybody went and dug the, the, dug the hole where they, put the, where they put the cross in there? No, sir. Oh, okay. I thought, somebody, I thought somebody was there. We were not there. He died all by himself alone. Nobody helped him. Amen. And he rose all alone by the Father's what, Kratos power. Raise him up. So, okay, son, the stage is set for you. Now, anybody that you save, you're going to dwell in him. <laughs> Any soul that comes to you, he's coming to surrender to you. That's it. That's salvation. Salvation means we have been saved. Saved from where? Saved from ourselves. God, the self-life destroys us. The self-life is a rebellious life. Oh. The self-life that is poisoned by Satan is God's enemy. Amen. You don't know that. Amen. Okay. That, that's what they call it, the old man. The old man is God's enemy. The old man allies himself with the devil. So your old man, the person you used to be, is of no use to God. That's where a new man is created. A new man is created out of your dead spirit. He comes out ah, in, the, in the image of him who created him in the first, in the first place. And it's, and it's in righteousness. Righteousness and holiness. Your spirit, it loves righteousness and holiness. You've been restored in communion with God, in righteousness and holiness and truth. Are you hearing me now? Amen. So when the Lord, anybody that Christ saves, all right, what saving, saving means, hey, I'm surrendering to you. I thought I could live my own life. I thought I could do everything by myself, but them, them devils are too hard for me. I can't fight against them devils. I will always lose. But I come to you. You conquered on my behalf. So now I'm coming to surrender to you. That is salvation. Real salvation is surrender to Christ and to his lordship over you. When Christ is Lord over you, what does it mean? He rules in you and through you. 
So how many, how many, uh, uh, let me say, uh, how many ministers are we supposed to have? Plenty of them. Let's say we are about, about uh, a thousand believers, all right, in the United States. No, no, just let's say that. Thousand real believers. We have thousand ministers. Thousand ministers. Why? Christ indwells each one of them. And if each one of them were to surrender to him and get to know him like he wants you to know him, you will be a minister. Yeah. And he will have a channel through you to reach out to multitudes. Mm -hmm. That is how salvation has been designed. That Christ will die, Christ will be buried, Christ will rise, and Christ will ascend. Christ will be clothed with all the power and majesty, and he will descend to come and live in anyone who receives him. Anyone who surrenders to him, you become the dwelling place of the Lord. And the Lord will use you and through you reach out to others. Okay, so here, it says, it says here, yours to prepare the soil, mine to drop the seed blessing into the prepared soil. You hear that? <clears throat> so if you are going to testify you know, you know, to somebody, don't think that is you going to do anything. Recognize that Christ dwells inside you. Don't worry about it. He dwells inside you. Allow him to talk to the person. He knows how to reach out. You see, we are trying to witness in accordance to some methodical, uh, methodical you know, in our approach. We have some method. How we follow uh, the, the, the Roman road and then the Israel road. But if the person is not on Roman road, it's on Jerusalem road. How, how are you going to reach him? Because your Roman road is not applicable to the Jerusalem road. What you learned, you see? So what was that? Salvation must be spread by the active, active activity of Jesus Christ in your being. He knows the soul. He knows those he, he's reaching out to. He knows them. So you follow him. Allow him to express himself in you and through you. You will always win souls. I will make you fishers of men. I will make you. I'll deploy my making power. And through you, you will save souls. Souls will come. So he says here, ah, mine to drop the, the, the seed blessing into the prepared soil. Together we share in and joy in the harvest. Together. You hear that? Me and you. Me, Christ, and you. We all share in the work because you give me your body. I live inside you. You allowed me to flow through you. You carried me wherever I wanted. And, I, and the soul came on in. So it's just me, me, me and you who reach out to, you know, to save souls. So the work of God is supposed to be man, man in communion with Christ. Man communion with Christ will always go together with Christ to save souls. Hear that? Man is supposed to be the dwelling place of Christ. So he will walk in man and lead him to go and win souls together with him. Now listen. It says here, spend more time in soil preparing. Hear that? Amen. Spend more time in soil preparing. Prayer fertilizes soil. Prayer fertilizes the soil of the heart. The heart is the place God has to drop the seed. So the heart must be prepared. And prayer does the job. All right? There is much to do in preparation. You hear that? There is a lot of work to do in preparing the heart as the soil in which God will drop the seed. Okay? Now, I read this. Amen. I read this to prepare you for what the Lord is going to say mm. about pro what kind of prayer. You see, you and I, we have, you know, we have un understood prayer only by talking in our mother tongue. Okay? We just talk, oh God, uh, uh, I cry to you, save my heart, you know, prepare my heart. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all we know. Mm. As the kind of prayer that, that, that prepared the soul. No! That kind of prayer don't prepare soil. The heart is a spiritual thing. And only the Holy Ghost 
can prepare the heart as a soil to receive the word of God. Spirit move me now. Why is he going to, why are we calling him? Why are we calling him Lord tonight? To prepare our heart. To make our soil whole. To make our heart whole again. To receive the word of God. So I'm going to talk about praying in the Holy Ghost. All right? Now here. Praying tongues, tongues, God's demolition gift. Demolition. You know what, what it means? You demolish some structures. You uproot some, some roots. You take out some, some garbage. You remove some hindrances. All right? So tongues is the way the heart is prepared. Praying in the Holy Ghost, I tell you, we have, we have underestimated this very realm. But you cannot prepare your heart by just talking English. Oh, no. We prepare the heart with the weapon God gave us. With the jackhammer that God gave us. The jackhammer of praying in the Holy Ghost. Tongues, God's demolition gift. And then not only demolition, you see the call of God on a, on a, on a to Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah's call is, is what the Holy Ghost does. I say Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah's ministry. That is the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I'm sending you to go and tear down, root out, not destroy. That's what Jeremiah did. And then build up. Amen. Build up. But you build up, you might destroy. Destroy that tree. The, 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 what, the, those things that are standing on the ground must be torn down. That's right. Okay? It must be torn down, pulled down, uprooted. Destroyed. There are many roots in the heart of man. There are many blockages in the heart of man, even the born again heart. So rebellious, so hardened, so unwilling to cooperate with God and you to God. Amen. You are you ain't saying Amen. All, all of you are. Yeah, help me out, help me out if you are there. <laughs> okay, I said, he says, tongues, it does not just demolish the old structures that occupy your heart. The old abandoned, <laughs> abandoned structures that are of no use to us no more when Jesus came in. But there are some structures still occupying your, your, you know, your heart that have not been cleared away. There are some activities and some conduct, some wrong attitudes. That since you've been born again, they are still there. They still control you. Your old man's you know, former attitude is still controlling you in your, in your born again state. You, you used to be jealous over everything. And you born, you've been born again, you are still jealous. <laughs> you used to be mean when you was in the world. Now Christ has come, you are still mean. <laughs> What's the problem? Amen. The old man has not given way. The dwelling place of the old man is still there. Ah, brother, your amen will, will just make me be, 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 be very sad. He ain't, he ain't help. <laughs> Let your amen. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk like you know what I'm talking about. Don't pretend like you don't know. <laughs> okay, he says here, tongues are not just demolition in the stuff. It doesn't just demolish the old structures of the old life. It doesn't just do that. It clears everything, but then it does something else. And then it says here, tongues is also the foundational gift. Foundational gift for all believers who mean business with God. If you are going to progress in the spirit, it depends on these tongues. If you're going to 
going to break through in the spirit, it depends on what you do with these tongues, this gift of tongues. Most people are the way they are because they ignored completely. It's la la la. It's la la la. That's all you do. Five minutes tongue. Say I talk tongue. You did what? You talk tongue five minutes? Even an hour, brother, an hour is far from the standard. An hour? You want to go and cast out devils with our tongue? <laughs> so, tongues, two aspects. Demolition. The, it, it demolishes, okay? All structures, all tree stumps. Spiritual, old spiritual, no, no, tree stumps that are still occupying your heart have not been no, in a, in a, in a uprooted. You're still going to church. You're still going there, but nothing has changed. Your heart is still mean and cruel and hard and cold. Where is the fire? Jesus. Ah, brethren. Let me, let me read this for you. Let me let, because I, be, before I read that, let me lay the foundation. Get this. Romans. Look at Romans, what it says. Because if you don't see it in the scripture, you, you, you'll be wasting your time trying to grow spiritually. Okay, Romans chapter 8. Okay. It says here. Ah. That's, uh, um, verse 11, and if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life, will quicken, will quicken, restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies. This body that will be buried. Oh yeah, he's going to be buried. But if it will be buried, it die, okay, let it die healthy. How about that? Amen. Your body will die one day, it will be buried. Okay? But if it will die one day, brother, as long as I'm alive, you're going to be quickened. The Holy Ghost has the power to quicken your body. Come on now. Get, get, get ready for your body to be quickened by the Spirit of God. We've been going to church, going to church, ain't no quickening. No quickening presence that you feel in your being. Your body is alive. Not your soul, not your spirit. The body itself is, 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 is responding to the quickening fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is your body not a temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. So can the Holy Ghost not quicken his own house? Yes. <laughs> they say here, we ain't finished. He said he will quicken, restore uh, restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, listen, so then, that's the, this, the, this is the passage. So then, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. Notice now. We are debtors, debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature. We are not bound by our carnal nature's demands. We are not to yield to our carnal nature and its demands. We don't owe the carnal nature anything. It's a nature that is condemned. Okay, so we are debtors, right, but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature to live a life ruled by the standards set up by the dictates of the flesh. We are not bound to submit to the, to the standard of life that the flesh wants. We are not bound to submit to the standard of life that the flesh, the carnal man, wants to live. Amen. We are not called to surrender to that, the, the tendencies of the flesh. Oh no! No, we are not bound to submit to that. The old man has no right to control us. The fleshly desires in your mortal bodies and your soul have no right to control the new man. 
The new man is in the image of Christ. Yes, God. And you don't, you, you don't rule over the new man. The new man rules. The new man rules and reigns in Christ Jesus. But listen. Then, then it tells you verse 13. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will go to church and sing in the choir and be happy. What are you saying about that? Did, did, did you hear what I said? Did you all hear? Did you all hear what I said? You, 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 you ain't saying something? Here. For. <laughs> for, <laughs> for if you live, verse 13, if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. Amen. Your fleshly nature will kill you, lead you to hell. Yep. Because if you die spiritually, where do you end up? Hell. H-E-L-L. -L. <laughs> For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if, listen to the word, listen to why this message is coming. But if, through the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if through the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, you are habitually, you are not once a week, not, not once every year, but you are habitually put into death. Ah, if by the Holy Spirit, you are habitually put into death, making extinct, killing it, killing it, deaden the impact of the fleshly desires on your spirit life. Ah, deadening the evil desires or deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. Look at King James. He says here. Yeah. Look at King James. King James. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, through the Spirit, through the Spirit, do mortify. So how do you uh, do the stuff is there through the Spirit? How do you do through the Spirit to mortify the, the deeds? That's how you, you walk in that spirit to kill the, the deeds of the flesh. It's by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is what destroys, dismantles the whole structures that you have allowed to stand in, the, in, in your heart. Praying in the Holy Ghost, that's what prepares and softens your heart. We are going to read what, what the Almighty God, I'm so glad I had nothing to do with this. That's not my message. That's the message of the master himself. Yes, the, can you imagine the master talking to you about tongues? Mm. The master coming and say, hey, this is what happens when you pray them tongues. Yeah. <laughs> and you are just still, still busy. You've been, you've been hearing about tongues since Moses left Egypt. But you ain't talking nothing. <laughs> All right, so let me go back and then I'll read what I've explained certain things to you. Okay, so let me now read and let's see what the Lord says about praying the Holy Ghost and what it does. Okay, remember, tongues is a demolition gift. It demolishes. God gave you tongues so he can destroy the works of the flesh okay, that have occupied your heart, that have ruled in your being. Okay? And then at the same time, tongues is the foundational gift to build you up. To build you up and make you get progress and breakthroughs in the spirit. The same praying in the Holy Ghost, it does two jobs. It tears down, it rebuilds. Let's go. Yes, the message, December, December 8, 2021, 4.45 a.m. 
the Lord speaks. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's it indeed. Yes, it seems like you do not pay attention when I speak to you. When I tell you something, it does not take long before you forget. Yes, when I tell you something, it does not stay with you for a long time, and then you forget. But as for me, I do not forget. No, I do not forget anything I tell you. <laughs> now, you will remember that I have told you some, some time ago that you should allow me, listen to that. I said, listen to this sentence, that this thought. He said, you, you, uh, now you will remember that I have told you some time ago that you should allow me, allow me. Eh? I'm the sower. Allow me to sow certain seeds in your heart. You've been going to church, ain't nothing sowing. Ain't nothing springing up. Ain't no flower, ain't no seed, ain't no nothing. Ain't no fragrance in your being. Amina. Amina. He said, listen to it. He says here. <laughs> he says here. Now you will remember that I have told you some time ago that you should allow me to plant my seeds. To sow my seeds. Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Yes, it is true. Yes, it is true indeed. But don't you know that you should blast in the Holy Ghost? <laughs> when the Lord started using the word blast, because we were, we were saying we are going to blast. We're going to blast in the Holy Ghost. The Lord took our word. <laughs> he said, but don't you know you have to blast in the Holy Ghost? <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes, it is true. Yes, it is true indeed. But don't you know that you should blast in the Holy Ghost? Yes, you must blast. You must blast. I say you must blast. Yes, the blasting. The blasting. The blasting. Yes, indeed. The blasting in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Your answer. Oh, what is the Amina? <laughs> Amina. <laughs> so all these all these things that is driving me crazy, your audience hear it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> so, but don't you know <clears throat> that you should blast in the Holy Ghost? Yes, you must blast. Yes, you must blast. I say you must blast. Yes, the blasting. The blasting, the blasting, yes, indeed, the blasting in the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah, but don't you know also that in everything, in everything, you must make effort. You must make, make some effort in everything. Everything you want to you know, become you know, perfect in, you, you make effort. Right? Okay. So don't you think that you must make you know, the effort? Take steps towards accomplishing it. In everything you do, you take steps Amen. towards achieving what you want to you know, accomplish. You must absolutely be determined and be serious about going after it in order to obtain results. Yes, you must commit to it and stay with it in order to achieve results. Anything you want to do. That's how you do it. That's how you gain it. Right? You commit to it. And then you do it until you achieve the result you want. Amen. All right. Don't you know that? Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you have read about and looked at, because that night, you know, we were, we were studying the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Holy Ghost that you have read about and looked at, the one that takes the least effort to receive is the one I have already given to you. Amen. I gave you tongues. It's the same channel of tongues that, that, that becomes the gift of tongues. The same channel of tongues. All right? So you, you got a tongues through which the gift of tongues, God will use it to, to bring messages. It's all, he gave it to us. 
So he's already given this, this, this tongues to every believer who will come to him. It is his. The Holy Ghost baptizes him. He delivers him into the tongues. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let nobody fool you. People say you get Holy Ghost, no tongue. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It is not true that when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, there is no evidence of tongue. It's a lie, a lie, a lie from the very pit of hell. Because them devil hates it. So they ain't going to let the people know the truth. It's a demolition gift. Hey, I, got, I, got, I got my land. Okay, I got my land. I put my, my, my shack and everything on there. And then you say you, you want the land. You take the land. Then you come and you bring your demolition gift. You come and tear all my shacks down. <laughs> you think I would like it? Mm -mm. Huh? I, I would, I'll be happy. Mm -mm. See you tearing down what I built. My old house. <laughs> Some people don't see it. The devil lived in our uh, in his house in us. The devil used to live in us. You you forgot him. <laughs> and then when Jesus cast him out, right, the whole houses that the devils lived in still are allowed there, still are occupying the ground of our heart. The whole the old attitudes still we ain't done nothing about it. We still hate our mother-in-law. We still hate our father-in-law. We still are fighting. <laughs> you ain't saying, man. What's... <laughs> I mean, uh, you was fighting them when the devil was your master. And now Christ is your master. You're still fighting your mother-in-law. You ain't. <laughs> you think the devil will let you stop? Cast him down. Destroy his dwelling place. Let the Holy Ghost come in with his bulldozer and tear down, demolish. All the unclean structures that the devil raised up to indwell you. He says here, now the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you, you have read about and looked at, the one that takes the least effort to receive is the one, you heard it, you heard it, you heard it, the one that takes the least effort to receive. You ain't say amen. The one that takes the least effort to receive is the one I have already given to you. Yes, I, I give that to everyone who has believed on me and has prepared his heart and his heart is ready to receive. I give it to every child of mine. So here, this is the key word I want you to hear and understand tonight. The key word. I want you to, to hear and understand. The one whose heart is ready, yes, I give it to him. I give it to anyone whose heart is ready. And that is the, found, the foundational gift which everyone must have. Yeah, amen. All the sons and children of God, they must have the foundational gifts of tongues. When you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's the first thing that you get. Mm. It's the same tongues, brother. The same channel the Holy Ghost will, will, will deepen. Amen. Ah, this is the key word I want you to hear. Understand, the one whose heart is ready, yes, I give it to him. I give it to anyone whose heart is ready. And that is the foundational gift Tongues, the foundational gifts which everyone must have. Yes, indeed. It is the foundational gift that everyone must receive before the rest of the gifts will follow. Amen. Before the rest of the gifts will follow. Foundational Holy Ghost and tongues. Before all other gifts. The eight other gifts, okay, will come on in. It says here. But it is not right away and immediately that you will receive the rest of the gifts. You hear that? Because the work must be done by the bulldozer. Ah, the work, ah, azu, the work must first be done. The, the heart must be plowed by the demolition gift of Blessing the Holy Ghost, brother, until them structures are gone. 
Them devils come by us, you know. <laughs> he said, but who came and spoiled our houses? Yeah, yeah we destroy you. Got no house no more. You are homeless. <laughs> Uh, the devil should become homeless. Mm -hmm. Roaming around here, you ain't got no place to stay. Right. At least not uh, uh, at least not in your house. <laughs> at least not in your house as a child of God. You have demolished all the structures of the old life that the devil used to hang around and bring his you know, his bodies in there. Oh, you are the only one, sir. I mean, I was about to charge. Oh, but <laughs> Azuka Monk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I ain't heard, ain't heard about that, John. But John, you, 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 you ain't saying some whole go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He alive there too. <laughs> Oh, glory be to God. Brother, I, I said I have been, I don't know, I have been wired up. When I found those two, I said, wow, I got dynamite sitting. <laughs> I got dynamite sitting down here. And the whole, the Lord said, you see, all the time I said, Lord, this message, this message, said, now, you reserve it for the last. For the last, and you know why. Ah. Hey, yes, God. He says here, I give it to anyone whose heart is ready. Mm -hmm. And that is the foundational gift which everyone must have. Yes, indeed, it is the foundational gift that everyone must receive before the rest of the gifts will follow. Mm -hmm. But it is not right away and immediately that you will receive the rest of the gifts. No. You must first, look at the order, you must first put to work the foundation gift. You must first let the Holy Ghost tongues do its work. You must first put to work the foundation gift you have received and allow it to work in your life. You must let the foundational gift you have received work first in your life and produce results. You need to go to church. Blast in the Holy Ghost until you have some results. The rest of you ain't know Amina. That's all right. Maybe you don't know how to say Amina. <laughs> Uh, let me hear from you. Let me hear from everybody who has Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Because it is you I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you get it, it's Amina. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm -hmm. When we went in, what, what, in Kenya, they'll tell you, ah, Pastor, I hear you. I hear you. Yes, I hear you. But you don't hear nobody. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you too. <laughs> Ah, I tell you, brother, he says here, you must let the foundational gift you have received work first in your life and produce results. Yes, you must let it work in your own life so that, listen to it, you've been with God since Moses left Egypt. What doors have been opened to you? Mm. You've been in church since Moses le 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 left the Jordan. <laughs> What doors have been opened to you because you talk tongues? Mm -hmm. And yet you asking God, uh, asking God to open door for you. Listen to it. He mm -hmm. says here, you must let the foundational gift you have received work first in your life and produce results. Yes, you must let it work in your own life so that Doors, D O O R S, doors will be open for yourself. You hear me, Brother Dwayne? Doors. Door. Oh, you've been sitting down there in the desert. Ain't no door open to you. You got Holy Ghost, ain't no door. What are you doing with the tongues? I tell you, believers, the past, 
past pastors will pastor don't talk tongues, so you don't know how uh, or the use of tongues. It's amazing. You don't know the use of tongues. This one, the second one, oh you yeah, he got my soul. Whoa, he got my he got whoa, he got my soul. And that was the one that the Lord gave first. <laughs> that was fire. Whoa, he was on fire too much. Listen to this. Ah, let it work for you. So in your own life, so that doors will be opened for, for you yourself. And then I will add the rest of the gifts. After the foundational gift has done its work, destroying the, the, the stuff that needs to be destroyed and uprooted, okay, I will add the other gifts. Okay, you say here. But if you come and sit here, and you will not blast in the Holy Ghost. You will not, you will not stir up yourself to blast in the Holy Ghost. Then it is not me you are, you are cheating. Hear that? He who will not blast in the Holy Ghost, come to church, they are blasting, he ain't blasting. He said, you ain't, you ain't cheating me. You cheat yourself. Did you hear that? That when we are all talking tongues, bro, get in there. Get in there and blast some Holy Ghost. Get in there and blast some Holy Ghost, brother, when they do all night here. What do you do? All sleep. <laughs> when the church calls for all night, get in there, go blast some Holy Ghost. He says here, Ah, you will not stir up yourself to blast in the Holy Ghost. Then it is not me you are cheating. You cheat yourselves. And you do not blame me if you don't make any progress in your lives. So what does it mean? Praying in the Holy Ghost to bring around some progress. Yeah, on, some growth. Yeah. Amen. Oh, believers. It says here, ah, some progress. Yes, God, in your life. No. It says here, let me go back. You, 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 then you cheat yourself that's if you don't pray in the Holy Ghost and you do not blame me if you don't make any progress in your life no you blame yourselves I have told you that if you don't blast in the Holy Ghost as you ought you do not blame me for whatever happens in your life in other words if there ain't no progress if there ain't nothing it's not my fault I gave you the gift to blast in the Holy Ghost you don't do it it's your fault So it's your fault. The state of your work right now, it's your fault. That's what he's saying. I give you Holy Ghost. I say blast. I say blast. He that speaketh in our in a, in a known tongue goes to church and sing in the choir. That's how it has become. But he don't say that. He that speaketh in our known tongue edifies, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Edify means to raise up a humongous structure. I am on the inside of your being for the Holy Ghost to dwell in there, brother. Yeah. Oh, the sons of God. There are times you, 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 you make your, your Savior so sad. Look at them sitting down there. They come to church, they sit down there and talk, 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 talk. You ain't talk no tongues. I mm -hmm. uh, ain't, ain't going there. I ain't going there to say some stuff. He said, like here. I have told you that if you don't bless in the Holy Ghost as you ought to, you do not blame me for whatever happens in your life. You must blame yourselves. But if you do not bless and keep on blasting persistently to allow me to dig out. Ooh, <laughs> allow me to dig out from your being the spiritual tree stumps wow, that are hidden in your heart, the three stumps, all three stumps hidden in your heart. The place that the devil settled are some stumps there. He's been gone, I cast him out, but he just be going to church. You ain't blasting so I can dig them out. I can dig out them stuff that are in your being that are not good. I cannot give you the rest of the gifts. So that my power can flow through you. If you don't, if you don't bless Holy Ghost to allow me to dig out the old three stumps, 
Then brother, I cannot give you the rest of my power. So you can do what? So, so my power can flow through you. If I gave my power to you under such circumstances, when you ain't blasted, when you ain't allow me to approach the, the old three stumps of the devil inside your, your heart, if you don't allow me to do that, if I give you my power to, uh, to you, it will not work. It will work harm and destroy your own life. You're talking about power. You're talking about power coming to flow through you and you have the old stuff inside you. How dare I give you the power? You will destroy your life. It's dynamite. It's not even the Kratos. No, it's not the Kratos power. It's this, the dynamite power. Dynamite blast. Hey, when you use some dynamite, don't you feel the, the, the impact far away? You put dynamite in a place, you boom, every place, you know, shakes. But yeah, the Holy Ghost power is dynamite. Ah, it says here. It will, it, will, it will not work if I give it to you when your, your ground is not, it's not in a, in a, in a, uh, made real by me. If I have not cleared it out and dug the things out and I give you my power, it ain't going to work. No, no, it will work harm and destroy your own life. Have I not told you that I do not give out my power casually and indiscriminately? Oh, no. I don't give my power just like that casually, just to anybody. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't do that. Yes, if you are not mature and grown and perfect, I cannot and I dare not give my power to you. People are crying for power, but they have all kinds of holes in their soul. All kinds of darkness in their soul. Uh, they ain't crying for the Holy Ghost to purge them. They ain't blasting tongues until tongues destroys all the tree roots. Amina! Ain't nobody saying Amina here. The prophet, the prophet is seen. So give me, give, give me, yeah, 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 yeah. All those here, they are all, they are not, they are all sleeping. They are, they are. Yeah, yeah. So wake them up. Yeah, yeah. Set them on fire. Yes, God. Is there? I should set you on fire. Amen. But a child's come and set them on fire. Yes, amen. All right. Say here. Yeah, one day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if yes, if you are not mature and grown and perfect, I I cannot and I dare not give my power to you. Now you must allow the foundational gift to work in you and destroy and uproot the tree stumps and break the yokes of bondage in your heart yes, God. and prove to me that if i give it to you you can handle it yeah. you have to prove to me that if i give you power you can walk in it power ain't given to you just to show off yeah. <coughs> can you help me my brother my bride my water please Ah, if you are not mature and grown and perfect, I cannot and I dare not give my power to you. Now you must allow the foundational gift to work in you and destroy. Thank you. Destroy and uproot the tree stumps and break your yokes of bondage in your heart. Thank you. Okay, and break the yokes of bondage in your heart. And prove to me that if I give it to you, you can handle it and can use it to do the work. Or prove to me that you have prepared yourself very well. You have, you, that, that, that you have prepared yourself very well. You are up to the standard in the spirit where you can handle the power that will flow through you. Uh, that through your being to do my work. It is absolutely impossible to trust you with my power if you can prove that. Now, is it not I myself who will give you that power? Yes, it is I myself who will give you that power. And it is also I myself who knows 
I am the one who knows. Yes, who knows every single one of you sitting here in my presence. I know you all, he says. We were four sitting down there. He said, I know all of you. So I know everybody. Oh, my Lord. I tell you, it don't scare you. <laughs> but if you are not serious and are not determined and committed to blast in the Holy Ghost and go on to receive the power, then how do you go and do the work? <clears throat> and how do you do it? Don't you know that it is the reason why I first gave you the foundational gift of the Holy Ghost to blast in the Holy Ghost? That, that's the first reason. The reason why I give you the, what, that foundation, that, not gift, Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. tongues. Mm -hmm. So you use it to prepare. Mm -hmm. Prepare yourself. You hear that? Your preparation in, uh, entails growing. Mm -hmm. Your preparation and, entails making headway in the spirit. Yeah. How do people grow? Apart from Holy Ghost, how do you grow? You don't see no growth. Ah. ah, don't you know that it is the reason why I first, I first give you the foundational gift of the Holy Ghost to blast in the Holy Ghost so that as you pray in tongues, as you blast in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will be able to lay the axe to the root of the tree stumps mm -hmm. Woo! in your heart and destroy and uproot them and remove all the debris ooh, that have accumulated in your being. You think you you you, you think that when, when you dismantle the devils in a former house, there will not be some debris left. <laughs> yes, I give you first the foundational gift of the Holy Ghost, so that as you pray persistently. And constantly in the Holy Ghost tongues, you will be able to clear all the thorns and briars and uproot all the tree stumps. All the tree stumps still occupying the land of your inner life. And especially your heart. It is the Holy Ghost tongues that you must take hold of and blast in the Holy Ghost. To remove everything from the within of your being. You hear that? When are you going to do that? Right now, Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit, move me now. It should move you now. Make my life whole again. Spirit, move. Move. Move in my being. Let me destroy the, the dwelling places of them devils. Hallelujah. Ah, he says here, I have spoken, yes, I have spoken to you before about this blasting in the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, indeed, you must take hold of the tongues and blast all the time and persistently. And remember that it is in faith that you blast in the Holy Ghost and hold on to it and pray through into victory. Now, when you blast in the Holy Ghost and you do so in faith persistently, then the heart is wide open and every tree stump is dug out and removed and every stumbling block woo, and every spider worm <laughs> is removed and destroyed. But now, 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 now you listen. Did you hear this word? Mm -hmm. what, did Paul, what did Paul say? Oh, ye Corinthians. Oh, our mouth, our mouth is open wide to you. Huh? But you are, you are narrow in your being. <laughs> ah, he said, he said, be ye enlarged, oh ye Corinthians. Be ye enlarged. Blessing the Holy Ghost. Widen your inside. Oh, my Lord. He says here. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes God then the heart is wide open and every tree stump is dug out and removed and every stumbling block alright and every spider worm is removed and destroyed now don't you know that you must also 
possess the fruit of the spirit. You hear that? Don't you know that you must also possess the fruit? So what does the praying tongues do? All that the blasting in the Holy Ghost does prepares the soil for the fruit of the spirit to be dropped in there, to germinate. Listen, uh, uh, I put, was there, Prophet Richard, all right? Prophet Richard says something about the Lord. He said, if you don't pray, yes, you hear me now. Whoever appears at the judgment seat of Christ and, and the Lord cannot find in him all nine gifts of the Holy Ghost or the, of the, or what, the fruit of the Holy Ghost, you are gone. You hear that? All nine gifts of the Holy Ghost fruit must be evident in what in your life. But all you all you you all do is just go to church. What steps are you taking to, to let the fruit of the Spirit grow in your being? Bless the Holy Ghost. Bless the Holy Ghost. You see, you see, as the as the old things are being cleared that way, new things are taking its place. That's right. Amen. There's no, there's no empty space in the spirit. Oh no. As self okay, moves away from where it, or it was occupying, the spirit of God takes over. So as you bless Holy Ghost, you destroy the flesh and all the evil things, then the new stuff are growing. Ah, the, the seed of the spirit is, is now being planted. The Lord said, allow me to plant my seeds. Did he not say that? Allow me to plant my seeds, new seeds in your being. Clear the ground for me. He says here. Ah, yes, God. He says, okay. Now, don't you know that you must also possess the fruit of the Spirit? Yes, everyone should receive and possess the fruit of the Spirit in his heart. Because it is the fruition. Why do you have to have the fruit of the Spirit in your heart? Why should it grow in your being? Because it is the fruit of the Spirit that makes you resemble your Lord Jesus Christ. So how are you going to re re resemble uh, uh, Jesus? In, in, in just in his joy area? <laughs> No, no, no. That was what I said. Okay, you resemble Jesus in a, in in the way uh, he's joyful. But how about the rest? Well, I, I, I don't know about his patience. Well, you don't know about his patience, but you, you or me, I have only the joy part. <laughs> I have only the Jesus who is joy. That's uh, the rest. I don't I don't know him, brother. It's nine. It's, it's ninefold. What? What well, fruit? You must have. If you see, listen. The fruit of the spirit is love. He didn't say the fruits. We have the fruits of righteousness by Jesus Christ. And then we have the fruit of the spirit. It's one fruit. They call love. Okay? Love is, is joyful. Love is patient. Love is humble. Love is self-control. Love is, 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 is human. Love is good. Love is goodness. Love is you know, kindness. It is love alone. It is one fruit called love with all those aspects. The flavors of that. One, one, because God is love. And in God is all the ever characteristics. So all the characteristics of love, okay, make love just one fruit. That's why, that's why Paul wrote in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 13, love is kind, love is patient, love, what, well, isn't that the fruit of the spirit? You see, so there's all, all, you can't have some and leave the others. No, you won't resemble Jesus. You must have all nine fruit, all nine, all one single fruit, the eight flavors in addition. You must have all in your being so you can begin to resemble Christ in your conduct and attitude. We are to reveal him to the world. But when they meet you, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw. You know, he was good. He was kind, but some areas he ain't got no joy. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he, he was just trouble all the time. Ain't no peace in his soul. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> he don't resemble Jesus. <laughs> the, the Jesus you are trying to show us is not a Jesus in the Bible. <laughs> Ooh, 
the Jesus you are to go and manifest must be 100% Jesus. Biblical Jesus. His conduct and character. So we must grow. He says here, yes, everyone must possess the fruit of the Spirit. Because that is how you, you become like Jesus Christ in your conduct and character. Then the Lord will also add the gifts of the Holy Spirit to you. So you can do the work he wants you to do. So now we have the, what, the fruit of the Spirit that makes us look like Jesus. And then the gifts of the Spirit that make us do the works of Jesus. You see that? The, the, the fruit of the Spirit. All right, makes us conform to Jesus in our character. And then the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the, nine gifts of the Holy Ghost, make us qualified to do the works of God. Amen. Oh, yes, God, yes, God. Anybody else going to say amen? amen? Then the Lord also will add the gifts of the Holy Spirit to you so you can do the work he wants you to do for him. And so you must absolutely demonstrate and show it to me that you are truly ready and prepared. Yes, that you are ready and well prepared. But you must understand that I do not just start off with you and immediately there and then I entrust you with my power. No, I don't start right there with you and right there I give you all my power to you. Oh, no, it ain't going to happen. It don't happen like that. No, no, no. As long as there are vain and useless things and many tree stumps and other stumbling blocks still occupying the land of your heart and inmost being, I dare not and cannot give you my power. No, I must not give you this power and I cannot entrust you with my power. And so I say to you, continue to plow. Continue to plow the land of your heart. Take your time to blast in. Oh, I like that. Take your time to. Don't you hear him cry? Take your time to blast in the Holy Ghost. Take your time. Don't rush, brother. <laughs> but you all don't get help. I mean, oh, help me out, somebody. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, Jesus, I love my brethren. They make me happy. <laughs> Take your time to blast in the Holy Ghost consistently and incessantly and remove and uproot, uh, uproot and destroy all the roots and tree stumps as well as the thorns and briars that occupy the land of your heart. Yes, if you will go on and dig, yes, dig and root out all the tree stumps and every wild weed and thorny bush and every briar that occupies the land of your heart, you yourself will see that the light is beginning to shine. Oh, my Lord. That's what we are looking for. That is the end result, the light. The, oh yeah, yo, let there be light, God. Let there be light in our being. Ah, tongues praying in the Holy Ghost, that's what He leads you to. To bring you in the same realm. Oh, it, 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 if we walk in the light, as what? As He is in the light. So that's where we are coming to. He's already in the light. But we have some darkness around our hearts. So let's blast until we break through and get the light shines and bring us to where he is. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, ah, you, you yourself will see that the light is beginning to shine in the heart. And the heart now feels at peace. Ooh, the heart now feels at peace in the presence of the Lord. Calm and undisturbed. You hear that? That's your inner life now. Peace and calm, undisturbed. Ah, yes, 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 indeed. Then it means a real work has been done. 
You hear that? When the light begins to break through in your being and peace and calm and undisturbedness begin to possess your inner life, real work is being done. Ah, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Says here. Ah, yes, 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 indeed. Then it means a real work has been has been done. Things are happening in the spirit, and now the eternal Lord God is beginning to be pleased. Woo! <laughs> Ah, your father God now is beginning to be pleased when he see the light shining. Ah, yes, God, they are coming. They are coming. They are breaking through, breaking through the darkness. They are coming to the light. You ain't saying, Amina. Amen. Yes, God. He says here. Ah, and now the eternal Lord is beginning to be pleased. Then he will begin to give unto you what you what he needs you he needs to give to you. Yes, indeed. Is it not I who called you? Yes, I called you indeed. And when I call you, notice when I call you, I know that listen listen to this, because some of you don't understand. When I call you, I know that I know the gifts I must give to you. To do the work I want you to do for me. You hear that? Amen. When I call any you 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 are you've been called by God. You, you are all there. You 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 are you receive Christ. Now he called you. But because you ain't blasting the Holy Ghost, nothing's gonna come from the Lord. All that you must have will not happen until the Holy Ghost blasting tongues has done its work in your being. And then the peace of God has taken over your inner life. Un, uh, undisturbedness and peace and calm rules yes. and reign Thank they you. reign yes. in the within of your being this is your portion in the Holy Ghost mm. ah sons of God don't let your father so 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 uh, no, they get so discouraged by some of the things you all do come in the light and let your father God be pleased with you he says here, now, if I am going to give you my gifts, which I must give you, do you not have to first prove to me that you are worthy to receive these gifts of mine that I want to give to you? You must prove to me that you are worthy to receive it, that you can handle it. Okay, he said here. Yes, you must show me that you are worthy of the gifts the eternal Lord wants to give to you and, and that you have prepared yourself and are now ready to receive them. Yes, you must be prepared. You, you must be prepared okay, and made ready and show that if the eternal Lord God gave you the gifts, you are ready and able to use the gifts to do the work the Lord will entrust you with and to do it to the satisfaction of the Lord God. Yes, it is true. Yes, it is true indeed. He said, yesterday, yesterday I rebuked some of you because I did not hear your, your, your voice in the conversation. See, when I ask you for Amina, Amina, I'm not asking for nothing. The Lord wants you to get involved in the, the word coming to you. Because if something is good, don't you enjoy it? Amen. Okay, show to the Lord that you, you, you are really getting involved in what he's telling you. Amen. See, he rebuked us. He rebuked us because we, we, we are not you know, along with him. He's talking and he's happy and he's joyful. You know, the Lord expresses you know, his emotions. But you sit down there, just, just look, look at him like you are some statue. No. So he said, yesterday, I rebuked some of you because I did not hear your voice in the conversation. We were carrying on. Why are you stubborn and doing the same thing today too? Now, these attitudes, listen to this. These attitudes, oh, yes, God, let me see. He said, now these attitudes are, oh, yes, God, okay. Now, these attitudes are exactly some of the thorns and briars that I was talking about. 
Yes, that's indeed. Your nonchalant reaction to him is it, not right for him. The heart is not alive. There is no laziness in Christ. There is no lukewarmness in, in Christ. It's alive. It's heart. Life is life. Life is alive. When you, when you really are in the spirit, you enjoy the Holy Ghost. You enjoy Christ talking to you. Amen. You love his word. You, you enjoy it. But you, you all don't show no sign that, uh, that you enjoy the word. And so I say to you, to demonstrate and show me that you are truly prepared and are ready to be used by the Lord to do his work. Now, I did tell you when I called you. I, uh, did I not ask you whether you could walk with me? Well, it seems like it does not take much for you all to, uh, to forget what I tell you. But as for me, as for me, I do not forget anything. All the, all the many messages I have spoken to you, I know you have forgotten. But as for me, I do not forget. Now, the other day, did I not remind you of, of a song I had given you? Or okay, I had given to you some time ago? Yes, the eternal Lord God. Here's the song, the eternal Lord God. He will not forget. Yes, he will not forget. And so think about, think about it because he will not forget. Amen. And so today too, I say think about it. Yes, think about it because he will never forget. No, he will never forget. Yes, he will never forget. Everything he has said, every promise he has given to you, he will never forget. Yes, he is the God who keeps his promises. Ah, uh, yes, yes. What he says is what he does. Yes, the eternal Lord God does not talk about a bucket and then show you a cup. <laughs> Did you hear that? Amen. They, 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 they are not helping me. He said, the eternal Lord God does not promise you a bucket and show you a cup. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Amen. What he promised you is what he's going to give to you. What he promised is what he gives. Amen. If he ain't going to give, he ain't going to promise it. But once he promises it, he will give it to you. So he said, yes, the eternal Lord God does not talk about a bucket and then show you a cup. No, no, no. He does not do so. Now, don't you know that he's, uh, what he says in the word of God? Don't you know what he says? He says, ye shall know them by their fruit. And so it is by your fruit that he knows you. <laughs> the Lord God knows you by your fruit. The fruit you are bearing is how he knows you. He says here, Ah, what you are, he knows what you are. As for me, the Lord your God, what I say is what I do. My fruits show you who I am. My fruits are beautiful and wonderful. And so when you see me, you see immediately who I am. Isn't that something? That is how my children too should be. And that is why I have given you first the foundational gift to you. Yes, that language called tongues. Yes, those tongues. Don't you know that I give the tongues freely to all those who come to me? Yes, I give them freely to whomever will come to me. Yes, it is yours. Yes, it is for you. Yes, whoever will prepare his heart and make his heart beautiful in the spirit and is ready for me. Yes, I give it to him. Yes, indeed, I give it to him freely. So that he can start to take measures to make progress. Yes, so that he will put those tongues to use. Blasting in tongues daily and incessantly to beautify his own soul. Oh, my Lord. Beautify your soul. Ah. And then to come to me, to demonstrate to me and show me that. Yes, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. You have made me worthy. Indeed, yes, Lord. You have made me worthy and fit to be used by you to serve you and to do something indeed for your glory. Ah, yes, Lord. Use me more. 
<laughs> so you come to him and, and this is what you'll be saying yes lord ah you just you, you made me worthy i have received the blessing and now i'm i'm, I'm going to serve you so he said you yourself will come and tell him this you yourself will come and tell him this oh yes god ah he said, oh yes lord use me oh lord for your glory now don't you know that the Lord God also is not blind? <laughs> He's not blind. Yes, it is true. Yes, it is true. And so demonstrate it and show me that you are truly worthy. Yes, that truly you are prepared and ready. Yes, indeed. It is true that I have seen. Listen to this. This one was so good to us. This one, this one blew our soul. This, this part. You say here. Yes, indeed. It is true that I have seen that I can use you. Ain't that something? Ah, brother. That was so good to our soul. Wow. <laughs> he said, it is true that I have seen that I can use you to do my work. Yes, I have seen that about you all. Oh, yes, go. Yes, go. Help us, Lord. Ah, help us, Lord. You see, he watches. I want, I want you to know, the Lord watches your attitude. He knows you by your fruit. He knows you by your nonchalant attitude or warm or whatever, lukewarm or hot. He knows it all. So if, if, if things are not happening, don't look at Christ. Check yourself and see. What is the, uh, the atmosphere in your soul? The temperature is what? Minus 10 degrees in your soul, so cold and icy. How can God dwell in them? <laughs> How can the Holy Ghost you not know, be so frozen in you? Oh no. So he knows you. He says, Yeah. I have seen that I can use you to do my work. Yes, I have seen that about you all. But what is left is that you must now show me that you are truly prepared and ready for me to use you. I can. But prove that, yes, you are ready to be used. So I can, I, I can see that I can use. If I get you, I can use you. Whoa. Show me that you are truly prepared and ready for me to use you. Yes, I say that I have seen that I can use you to do my work. But you must demonstrate and prove it to me. That surely and truly you are prepared and made ready for me to use you. And that you will show me and say to me, O oh Lord, we are now ready for you to use us to do your work. And so give us the gifts that we need to do your work. But as long as those thorns and briars, the tree stumps, and the various lusts that war against the soul are still present in the heart, I surely and truly cannot give you my power. Cannot give you my power to do my work. It will not work. Even if I were to give you the power, it will not even work at all. Have I not told you to remove the beam from your eyes before you, you, before you can remove the speck that is in your brother's eyes? Now, if I do not help you to remove the beam in your own eyes, how can you be allowed to remove the speck in your brother's eyes? I must help you first. Help you remove the beam from your eyes. And then as you see, then I will allow you to go and help your brother. So many, many in the body of Christ who seem to be useless, so to speak, is because they have not allowed the Lord to remove the beam in their own eyes. So they can't see. They cannot see. So if they cannot see, how can I send you to go and help my brother? You will not be used by God to help anybody if you yourself are blind. Ah, yes, God. Yes, God. He says here. Amen. And so, go ahead and do everything I tell you. Yes, do everything I tell you to do. It is the truth I always tell you. Yes, it is the truth I always tell you. And so, go ahead and obey all I have told you. Have you not seen what I told Peter? I told him that if he did not allow me to wash his feet, then he has no portion in me. Amen. Yes, it is true indeed. I do not just get up and offer anything of mine to anybody. No, no, no. 
It is the eternal Lord God who knows everything. It is the eternal Lord God who has prepared and arranged everything. Yes, indeed. He is the one who calls and the same one who sends. And it is he who plans and distributes the gifts. The Father God. Yes, yes, yes. For every call he gives, he also knows the gifts that correspond to the call. You heard that? Every call he gives, he also knows the gifts that will correspond to that call. He knows it. Uh, every call he gives to every call he gives to someone, he also knows the gifts that should accompany the call. Yes, every call has its accompanying gift that the, uh, the gift that uh, that particular call deserves. But you must demonstrate it. You must live the life first before he gives you the, the corresponding gift that the particular call deserves. When you manifest in your life the call and live the life that call corresponds, no, no, uh, live the life that corresponds to the call. When you, he said, when you manifest in your life the call and live the life that corresponds to the call, then the Lord God confirms the call with the gifts the call deserves. Yeah. And so this is what I wanted you to know and understand. Yes, but I say the entanglements. Oh, the entanglements are plenty. <laughs> Ooh, the entanglements you are all involved in are, are plenty. Yes, I know everyone's heart and what is in it. Ooh. <laughs> Who are you dealing with? Some African God? You are dealing with the, the Almighty God. Said, so I know every heart and what is in it. Yes, I know every heart and I know where everyone has risen up to. Now, don't you know that you must blast in the Holy Ghost? You must blast. You must blast. Yes, you must blast in the Holy Ghost and uproot all the tree stumps. Now, the other day, I said to you to blast in the Holy Spirit until the light shines or until you, ha you, you, until you have, no, no, or have you all forgotten that? As for me, I have not forgotten it is the kind of assignment you need to do so the light will shine in your being that I have given to you to do. And so everybody should be engaged in this assignment and blast incessantly until you are able to uproot all the tree stumps that have filled the heart as well as all the thorny bushes, the briars and still, that still occupy the heart. But don't you know that everybody's tree stumps are, diff are different? Everybody's tree stumps are different. Yes, there are different kinds of tree stumps in each and everyone's heart. Uh, as well as different entanglements and different kinds of thorny bushes and briars in each person's heart. Now, if I want to talk about each person's entanglement and tree stumps and the various kinds of lustful desires in the heart, we will not live here today. One person's entanglements and three stumps uh, are more than you can talk about. They are more than you can enumerate. Some people's entanglements in the heart are more than others. They are many. And so when you come and sit here in my presence, do not play games with what you are doing here. Do not turn your prayer into sleeping. Do not let your sleep, uh, sleep overcome you. Watch. So that sleep does not, uh, was, does not steal you blind. Ooh. The other day I spoke to you about it. Yes, if you don't watch, before you are aware, sleep has covered you and enslaved you and robbed you blind. And anyone who loves to sleep does not receive any blessing. Yes, he does not receive any blessing whatsoever. I have told you already. It is only as you are awake that you partake of every blessing that is coming into your, into your midst. And so you can receive your portion. 
But who will make you know, who will wake you up when you are asleep? <laughs> and tell you that you are missing out on what, what is being passed around as blessings. So you, so you should wake up and go and receive your portion. Who will wake you up? <laughs> no, no, no. No one will do that. Even when I came tonight, uh, even when I came tonight, if I came to distribute blessings, many will not, will not receive anything. It will be only for those who are present and awake. I will not go around. <laughs> I will not go around trying to wake up everyone to come and receive his portion. <laughs> you are sleeping sleep. <laughs> I'll just come and pass to those who are awake and I give them the apple. <laughs> you wake up, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you keep on sleeping. Keep on sleeping. The, the, the Lord will, will come by you are snoring. Yeah, you live it. <laughs> he leave you there. He gone. He says here. Yeah. Uh, he says I have I have told you already that it is only as you are awake that you partake of every blessing that is coming into your midst. Mm. And so you can receive your portion. But who will wake you up when you are asleep mm. and tell you that you are missing out on what is being passed around as blessings? So you should wake up and go and receive your portion. Oh, no, 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 no. No one will do that. Even when I came tonight, if I came to distribute blessings, many will not receive anything. It will be only for those who are present and awake. Those who are, he didn't say those who are on, on Zoom. <laughs> he had a pastor, your members. <laughs> so when you call all night and you, and you are blasting, only those who are here will receive any blessing. So now make that, well, make note of that. Okay? When the body is supposed to meet, the body must meet. Right? You are you gather to pray to pray in the in the in the Holy Ghost, gather and pray in the Holy Ghost. If you stay out, if you don't come and the Lord appears, he ain't gonna think about you in the house. Because you didn't honor him. Ah he says here. Even when I came tonight, I came if I came tonight, if I came to distribute blessings. Many will not receive anything. It will, not, it will be only for those who are present and awake. I will not go around trying to wake up everyone to come and receive his portion of the blessings. I will not say, oh, John is not here. Uh, uh, Mary is not here. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I ain't going to do that. I will simply give the blessing and my gifts to those who are ready to receive them. When I sent... When I said I was coming to give blessings, that is exactly what I would do. And give the blessings to those who were present. Mm -hmm. When I came, I will not go around making announcements that I have come to bless pe the people. No, no, no. I will not do that. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. If you don't show up, that's it. Those who are present are those who receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. so, so keep that in mind. And so that's it. And that is the reason why you must prepare yourself in advance and be ready. Anytime the Lord is coming to visit his people, you should be ready in advance and be prepared because whenever the eternal Lord God is coming, he comes suddenly Amen. without any prior notice. Did the Holy Ghost not come suddenly? Amen. Ah, yes, God. He says, he says here, yeah, he comes suddenly without any prior notice. Nobody expects him. And so you should prepare yourself in advance and be ready. That is the word of God. Indeed. Yes, that is the word. Don't you see that he uses the parable of the thief? The parable of the thief who comes uninvited and without advance notice. <laughs> advance notice, that's what he uses. Yes, he used the, the, the thief's manner of coming upon you suddenly to warn you. John's gospel talks about that. Yes, that is true indeed. And so, what I want you to hear is all I have spoken to you. As for me, I will speak the truth to you. Yes, it is the truth I will speak to you. Yes, the heart is not yet full of light. Hear that. 
the heart is not yet full of light. No, the heart is not full of light yet. Go on and blast incessantly in the Holy Ghost until all the entanglements have all disappeared from it. Yes, until all the entanglements have left the heart and the heart is filled with light. And then I will be able to sow my seeds. Yes, sow my seeds in the heart that is full of light. The seeds are important. Yes, the seeds are very important. Now, if you say you belong to the Lord and you don't resemble him, then how are you, how are you his? Those who are his resemble him. That's what he's saying. Do you all not resemble your children? Do you all not resemble your children? And do you and do your children not resemble you? Amen. Why then should my why then should not my children resemble me? Why should my children not resemble me? I have shown you the way you must walk in. So you'll be you'll be like me. Whoever will not resemble me, because he will not do what I have told you to do, so you will be like me. He has his own self to blame. He cannot blame me. He will bear his own guilt. Yeah, he will bear his own guilt. I am not guilty. No, I am not guilty. I have come and done everything for you. And so let everybody hear the word, the message. I have given you the, the message. I have, I have arranged, you know, I have... Yes, I have arranged all things in order. I have given you the word. It belongs to everyone. Yes, it belongs to everyone. And so that's all there is. I will not add any more to it. But if I need to add any more to it, I will return and speak with you. If I don't need to add any more, then that's it indeed. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to you all. Yes, let him hear. Let him hear. And so that's it. That's it. There is nothing more to add to it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I was going to ask for us to sing the song, but maybe we should sing it. What time is it? Almost 11. Almost 11. Okay, so let's close it. Okay, and give God a clap offering again. Amen. Shall we thank the Lord? Shall you thank the Lord for all that He's done for us? Yeah. Give the Lord a clap offering again and acknowledge Him. Acknowledge what He has done. For the last eight days, the last eight days, the Holy Spirit has labored and blessed us. It has been one of the most amazing times that the Spirit of God has come upon us. I'm asking you to honor the Lord, to acknowledge, acknowledge Him and thank Him. Thank Him for what He has accomplished. Thank Him, O oh Lord, for His gifts to us. His, His gifts have been plenty. His gifts have been more than we can handle. Uh, the gifts of abundance of grace uh, and the gift of righteousness. His gifts of his presence poured upon us. Father God, we thank you. We acknowledge you as the only true God whose heart is towards his children. You are the only true God who cares and loves his own. You have loved us these past two weeks. You have proved your, your constancy to us that we can trust you, that we can depend on you. You are dependable. You are a God whose trustworthiness ah, is eternal and everlasting. We thank you that, Lord, we cannot count on the help of man. For vain is the help of man. But we can count on the help of the almighty God. The Lord God is there for each and every one of you. The Lord God will not fail you. The Lord God has called you. He also will stand with you. He also will prepare you. He also will lead you in the way you should go. The Lord God has given you the Holy Ghost, ah, the gift of tongues, to be the foundational stone that will clear, clear the soil of your heart and prepare the soil of your heart to receive the sowing of the sower. 
Father God, we thank you that you are the sower, the sower of the righteous seed, the sower of the good seed, the sower of the harvest that the Lord that will come forth from the seed you plant. Thank you, O Holy Ghost. Our life will never be the same. We acknowledge, O God, that the blasting in the Holy Ghost shall be something now that we're going to commit our whole being to it. For Lord, that is what is going to bring us into the realm of the Spirit. That we will blast, we will blast, we will blast and break through in the Spirit. And break through into the light of the glory of your presence. Amen. Father God, I thank you that this is Lord God for open to everyone, every child of God have, can have this, this access into the light. Ah, this breakthrough access into the light of your glory, the light of the presence of Christ. Father God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for your children. I thank you for everyone online. I thank you for what you have accomplished. I thank you for what you have wrought in their being. I thank you because, Father God, you are their God. You are their Lord. You are Jehovah, the everlasting God, the faithful God, the dependable God. Father, we give you all the glory, all the glory for what you have done in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, we thank you. Ah, Father, we bless you. Father, we acknowledge you have been good to us. You have blessed us. You have comforted us. You have strengthened our faith. You have calmed us down. You have revealed yourself to us in a very practical way. Your presence has been closer to us more than ever. Father God, we thank you for the assurance we have that Father, you know you can use us. That is why you are talking to about the tongues. Ah, uh, you know you can use us. You know you can use us. You know we are usable material. Ah, yes, God. Father God, do not forget your children as I prepare Lord to, to leave them I leave them in your hands I leave them in your, in your hands oh God your heart Father God is for them Father continue the work oh God that you started build upon it oh God by the power of the Holy Ghost Father God I thank you I give you praise I give you glory I give you honor oh God I thank you for you are true to your children. And we are asking you, O oh God, the Father, peace, the peace of God, who will now Lord, be ushered into our being. The confidence of Christ who will now settle down in our hearts. What we have heard, what we have seen, what we have received in our being, who will now rest and abide with us in the name of the Almighty God, and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, let the Holy Spirit continue to minister to us. Ah, Lord, I am thankful to thee, O God, for the work that you are doing and you continue to do. Amen. Bless those that are online. Father, an amazing sight that, Father, they kept coming online. Father God, they have proved that they are obedient children and very co committed to you and serious-minded. Father God, let it be. Uh, prove them and use them. Let them bless in the Holy Ghost. Let them bless in the Holy Ghost. Father, this is my prayer. Let a burden of blessing in the Holy Ghost, Father God, be given to each one of your children. A burden to bless in the Holy Ghost. A burden to rise and penetrate into the realm of light. The realm of light. The realm of the glory of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let it be so, Father God. Let it come down upon their being. Let the Spirit of God rise within them like a mighty thunder. Ah, Father God. Your name be glorified. Your, your name be exalted. Exalted be the Lord our God. Ah, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. You alone are Jehovah God. You alone are the master of our lives. You rule and reign in our being. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. To you be all the adoration. And unto Jesus our God. Be glory and honor. And majesty and dominion. Both now and forever. And everybody said Amen now. Amen Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
you, Son of God. Thank you, my Lord and my Savior. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. It all belongs to you. Yes, no one will touch your glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. Pastor Fields, come. Uh, and brother, do.